The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 750 Isvaldi's Sad Scientist Hours later, after Gerardo had awoken and relieved Scheinspark of her piloting shift, Valet and Scheinspark stepped into the pantry where Niala waited, patiently shining a light against one wall. The chain that had held her once empty body now shackled a long main stallion, posture slumped. He cringed as Valet entered. Start by explaining who this is, Scheinspark requested. Should I have seen him before? Uh, Valet blinked. Ah, uh, yeah? This is Navare. I told you about my past in Ice Reach, right? We ran into him in Isvaldi, where he was working for Chauncey. Scheinspark shook her head. I don't think I was there. Oh boy, let's see. Valet rubbed her head. So, long story, just to make sure I leave nothing out. Last I saw him six years ago, he transferred himself into Niala's body, which is why she's stuck in Moonglass now, and ran off and left me with her glass. Somehow Chauncey found him, got him working for him, and then when we got down there to go bust stuff up or whatever, Chauncey was like, wait, you want this guy's body? And zapped him with Stanza, which removed his cutie mark and gave us Niala's body. I'm sure I told you that. And now he's here because... Uh, she reddened slightly, glancing away in embarrassment. Navara folded his ears in fear. Shinespark slowly nodded. Valet took a deep breath. I kinda, maybe, had Felicity checking out Crystal, since nobody had made sure she was okay after we got blown up in his folly and she was all, Hey, this mare has multiple cutie marks, and I was kinda impulsive and wondered if touching her with Niala's body would do anything, and figured if it was bad, we could just moonglass her empty again. And guess who showed up? Shinespark watched Navara with a slightly open mouth. That was probably impulsive, yes, she agreed. So now what? If he's evil, do we seal him in Moonglass again? Well, we could, Valet slowly nodded. Most of our glasses failed, but we are carrying around that piece puddles as cutie mark was tucking. Would be kind of fitting to stick him in there when he was the one who put her in it in the first place. I guess I could go get that. Like, nobody here wants to deal with him, right? Navara bowed his head. Sister, wait, Niala asked, sitting on a barrel with her light, keeping Navara captive. He might not have his memories from before he took my body, but he does remember the work he did for Chauncey. I've been talking to him while we were flying, and he was trying to help me get my body back. Wait, really? Valet blinked and tilted her head, glancing at Navara. What's all this about? Navara cringed. He's very afraid of you, Niala quietly added. But he's not the same pony you once knew. Okay, buddy. Valet sat down, not advancing any closer, but keeping her eyes on Navara. You have my curiosity. She says you want to help us? If you are going to dispatch me, please make it merciful, Navara whispered. I have heard of my wrongs against you, but if you grant me a lease in life, I will serve you and try to right my wrongs against you and your sister. Valet raised an eyebrow at Shinespark. Any opinions? Shinespark stared him in the eye. We're not interested in torture or drawn-out revenge. What are you afraid of, and what are you offering? We aren't short on resources, but we're very tired of being betrayed. Luna's artifice, Navarro raised a hoof, pointing it at Valet. In my past life, I located and awakened her from Obsidian, and my own awakening in this body found me at the mercy of her wrathful hooves. I lived for six years without understanding of why or what I had done to her until we met again in Isvaldi, seconds before my undoing. Less than a day ago to me, his ears fell, I knew nothing of the significance of the body I inhabit, nor why you had reawakened me now until Niala explained. The artifice is a raffle result of my past life's hubris and- Okay, real quick, the lay butted in with a frown. Stop calling me that! My name is Valet. I know who Makutima came from, and I'm still a pony in spite of it. You're gonna get a lot fewer raffle results if you treat me like one. And stop talking about me like I'm not here, too. Navarro cringed, nodded, and continued. Chauncey discovered me after I gained this body and 
confide me to Esvaldi in hopes that I could recreate my past work in brand transference. To this day, none remain who know the procedure that was used to pull you from the obsidian and place you in a body valet, nor does anyone know how we determined that your obsidian held an artifice, or even whether we were looking for such a creation. Were that procedure to be rediscovered, you could sacrifice me and restore your sister to her body instantly. It is a fate I would happily meet with, knowing that some of my sins could be undone. Valet rubbed the back of her neck. Bananas! The old Navarro was nowhere near this wimpy! Better than cackling man, I guess. Sparky, any thoughts? Shinespark slowly frowned. You want us to let you experiment for the sake of helping Niala? Would these experiments involve the same things you were doing in Isvaldi? Using mothers to transfer obsidian brands to foals or puddles and stanza? Navarro bowed his head. Everything would be by your leave. Will it, and I will test no more, staying in chains and giving freely what I have already learned in hopes that you could build on the acts I committed to learn it and obtain knowledge worth obtaining. Puddles and stanza I can no longer work with, and while transference using mothers is a proven step in the right direction, it was not likely involved in my creation of Valet. Staying locked up and just telling us what you know already? Valet nodded in interest. You know, I think I've learned enough stuff I didn't want to know about what I am already to be cool with that. Probably not a lot worse you can tell me. Maybe we could play it by ear later, but... Sparky? Shinespark hummed and thought. You might not have had ethical considerations for what you did under Chauncey, but we do. I wouldn't be opposed to hearing knowledge you already have acquired. You have my word that we will act in good faith and not bring you undue discomfort or harm, provided you do the same and don't attempt to sabotage us or escape and notwithstanding any decision we make to seal you in Obsidian. Navara bowed. You are merciful. I will enlighten you as best as I am able. Ah-ha, Valet bit her lip. Yeah, we'll do that. Niala, are you okay in here, watching him a while longer? I wanna maybe get someone set up on shifts regarding him until we can verify for sure he's trustworthy. Don't worry, Niala assured. I've been talking with him a lot already. I won't get bored. Valet glanced back one more time, then strolled into the kitchen with Shinespark. So, she said once the door was closed, you think he's a fraud? I can't say, Shinespark answered, leaning thoughtfully against the counter. It is true that they somehow put you together from an empty bat pony body and a piece of moon glass. However that works, he did figure it out. My concerns are more about his intentions than whether the problem he's working on is possible. Yeah, but here's the thing, Valet met her eyes. Suppose he's selfless and really does care about atoning and is somehow a nice guy. That means he'd be legitimately trying to help. Suppose he's a selfish pig who just wants to save his own skin. Helping us is a way for him to get us to delay soul-sucking him so he'd also want to try to help. The only way he's going to bite us in the back is if he somehow wants to screw us over enough to be willing to die for it. Now, there's a few things that don't line up with his story. Specifically, I'd love to know how and why he stuffed a Windigo in puddles prior to meeting Chauncey. But, eh, maybe I'm getting played again, but he didn't scream evil martyr to me, you know? Wasn't getting any danger either. He wasn't even thinking about fighting me. Well, that's good to know. Shinepuck nodded, glancing at the door to the dining hall. Either way, I think he'll wait a day or two. Let's have that group discussion about Felicity and her sisters first, and then see what things look like for our next course of action before worrying too much about him. We're heading for Grand Bell now, and I don't know how long we'll want to stay there. Valet stretched. Well, Gazelle's sister seems friendly enough. She's just a kid, but she's like, actually nice. Feels bad that we had to beat up her brother. Not bad that we beat him up in the first place. I don't know how much control she has there, but she could make a nice host. You think? Shinespark's ears perked slightly. I need to meet her myself. While we're discussing this, is there anything else we need to do? Valet rubbed an ear. Eh, I should probably check on Iron Flanks and Starlight. See how they're doing. Maple especially. I bet she just hid under a pillow the whole night long and... Can't blame her. This night must have been really rough for her. 
It wouldn't hurt to check on the entire crew, Shinespuck agreed. Having Senesei and Lord Jire die here could have been shocking to anyone. I'm still shaken from it myself, but I'm used to coping with things like this. Shall we see who's awake and see if we can't get started? Yeah, yeah, Valet stretched hard and yawned, wincing from her wounds. Yeah, it's gotta be at least midday. Let's go see who's about. End of chapter 750